Welcome, podcast viewers, to another Workscapes podcast in our healthcare series. I am Eric Vinkhuizen. In a previous podcast, we reported on the final transitions from paper charts to electronic medical records, or EMRs, in a healthcare clinic. The clinic had an EMR for years to do their own documentation, but still used paper charts for all incoming paper, such as reports from other providers, radiology reports, lab work, etc. This incoming paper was filed into the paper charts and the providers had to sign off on them. This involved walking to the medical records office and going through the charts the folks in medical records had prepared for them. When the clinic went to a scanning solution, these incoming papers were scanned and put into a database called VISTA, which was linked to the EMR. The providers could now examine all the incoming paper from their office, and for the medical record folks, it meant that there was no more need to do all this work associated with paper charts. No more filing charts looking for charge, pulling charge, delivering charge to the front desk, or collecting charge from various locations in the clinic to bring back to the medical records. All the information about the patient was now in the system. When we looked at the impact of the new system on the provider's work, however, we noted that for the providers, the scanning solution actually created more work. It took more time to open the scanned documents, more time to read them, more time to sign off on them, and more time to create quick notes for the folks in medical records. On balance, you could say that as a result of the scanning solution, some of the work in this clinic had shifted. There was a lot less work for the folks in medical records, but there was more work for the providers. And that shift of work from people that work in the back office of healthcare organizations to the healthcare providers themselves is something that has been going on ever since EMRs were introduced. And it is something that we heard many healthcare providers complain about. They complain that documentation has become so cumbersome with the new systems that they cannot see as many patients as they used to be able to see when they had paper charts. And of course this is a problem because seeing patients is how healthcare organizations and many healthcare providers make their money. In today's podcast, we dig a little deeper into the issue of healthcare efficiency and healthcare IT by taking a closer look at the documentation practices themselves. We will follow a provider, whom we'll call Dr. Marcello, as he documents a visit into the EMR system after he has seen one of his diabetic patients. While he was with the patient, Dr. Marcello made some notes on the back of the billing slip. When they still had paper charge, he would make these notes on a piece of paper that could go directly into the chart. But now his notes on the back of the billing slip are just mnemonic devices for him to use when he types in his notes in his office. This is a common practice. One doctor in the clinic keeps a small notebook in his breast pocket. And in the ER, I saw nurses come out of the patient's rooms with their notes written on a paper towel. Anyway, now he's back in his office and the first thing he has to do is get the patient's chart. This takes a while as the computer had to be locked and some of the applications have timed out and shut down. It takes nearly a minute before Dr. Marcello has opened the right patient's chart. This may not seem like a long time, but when you talk to physicians, they often mention this as the reason why they don't want to use the computer in the examination room. They would have to sit there and bring up the system and waste a minute as the patient is just sitting there waiting. It's awkward and many doctors like to be closer to the patient and not behind the computer. After he has located the patient's chart, Dr. Marcello first enters the foot exam. People with diabetes often get problems with their feet, so doing a foot exam is routine. There's a tab for exams, which has a listing for diabetic foot exam. So here's diabetic foot exam complete. And result, today was a little abnormal. So here I can write comments. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But for now I will. Uh, Decreased sensation along plantar. After entering the exam, he navigates to the POV tab where he can enter the diagnoses. In this case, the patient had been sick for a few days, so he enters nausea and selects nausea and vomiting from the short list of possible ICD-9 codes and descriptions that comes up. Next, he types diarrhea, and he does not change the automatically selected first item, which simply reads diarrhea, and clicks OK. Then he selects DMT 
type 2 from the problem list and adds it to the visit diagnosis. He explains that even though this is a chronic ailment and already in the problem list, he still needs to select it. Yeah, because we did discuss it and I've ordered, I've taken some action based on that diagnosis, meaning okay. that I've ordered blood tests. Healthcare billing is done per visit not per patient. And the list of diagnoses for the visit provides a warrant for any examinations or procedures a provider performs during the visit. The documentation for each visit must be a coherent whole. Otherwise, there may be trouble with the billing. So after entering the diagnoses, Dr. Marcello selects the services, which is where he must enter any chargeable items. The nurse has already entered the capillary blood draw and blood sugar for the blood sugar poke she did for the patient a routine lab they draw for all patients with diabetes. Dr. Marcello selects an expanded visit with low complexity, code 99213 for the visit. This is the code for visits that are roughly 15 minutes in length and one step above the problem-focused visit. And one can see the rationale as Dr. Marcello looked at both the patient's more immediate problem of nausea, vomiting and diarrhea, as well as the management of his diabetes. After entering this information in the various tabs of the EMR, he navigates to the notes tab where the nurse entered the chief complaint and begins recording his note. Uh, chief complaint here for diabetes checkup, but also ill. When he does his recording, it is notable that he mentions again all the information that he just entered in the different tabs, except now he does it in a lot more detail. For instance, here Dr. Marcello describes the nausea and vomiting. He says that last night he vomited uh, 16 to 20 times uh, throughout the course of the evening. This morning he is holding liquids down. He's had uh, two large glasses of water and some orange juice. Yeah. While he is doing his dictation, he goes from tap to tap and often will repeat the information listed there. Here, for instance, repeats some of the patient's vital signs. Uh, objective, pleasant alert, no uh, distress. Uh, random blood sugar today was uh, 269. Weight is 233. He also describes the results of the foot exam. Feet, um, patient has uh, one to two plus pulses. He has diminished sensation along the plantar aspects of both feet upon monofilament sensation. Skin and toenail hygiene is adequate. When doing his dictation, Dr. Marcello repeats and expands on information that is already in the EMR. The reason why he repeats all this information is because this narrative description is what will be most useful to him or any other provider when the patient comes back. It is much more informative to have this description of the patient's diabetes. Uh, paragraph, patient has a history of type 2 diabetes mellitus. He tells me that in general his morning sugars are in the low 100 range. Uh, he will see readings of 180 after meals. Then to just have diabetes type 2 listed in the visit diagnoses. And there's a very practical reason for Dr. Marcello to repeat the information like the vital signs in his narrative. This way he can be sure that all the important information will be in one place and he won't have to search for it under different tabs. So essentially Dr. Marcello records the same information three times. Once on paper when he's seeing the patient in the exam room. Once in the different tabs of the EMR, mostly for billing purposes and once when he dictates his visit note for the transcriptionist. So this example serves as an illustration of why we hear so many doctors complain that EMRs have only created more work for them. Instead of writing notes in the chart while they are with the patient and finishing these notes by the time they walk out of the room, doctors now have to write their notes on a separate piece of paper, then transfer these notes into the different categories of the EMR, and then put that same information in the narrative, which is the note they themselves will use for future care. Many doctors now spend almost as much time documenting after each visit as they spend time with the patient. The bottom line is that the introduction of these EMR systems have created such overhead for doctors that they can't see as many patients as when they only had to write notes in paper charts. Now we did not actually see doctors use paper charts, but many of the doctors still remember what that work was like. Take for instance Dr. Velasquez, a pediatrician. She showed me a paper form she used to do her wellness exams on her patients and how efficient it was. Actually that's what I did. Uh, I was in private practice before and it was just paper and it was so efficient. I was able to see 35 patients in an eight hour period, pediatric patients. Yeah. Even physicals, I mean, because I have my physical forms that I just check, 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 check. You know, I don't have to enter, type, edit, and <laughs> do all the things that I'm doing. Right, exactly. And, uh, and I even have my nurse trained that she can fill this up for me. 
uh, and I actually just did corrections if I, and something right. was abnormal. Right. So that made my job very efficient, and I actually did have two medical assistants instead of one. So we did work. You could do more work. We could yeah. do more work yeah. and more easy. So, but now I cannot do that. I, it's it's really less. Efficient. How many people do you see now? Like on a full day. Yeah. Well, we have a big rate of no shows here, unfortunately. But I may have on a that Monday that I work full day, like twenty patients. Twenty patients. Yeah. As opposed to thirty-five. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. From her story, there seem to be two major advantages of paper. First. It was easy to make notes during the consultation, in essence allowing the doctor to make notes while she interviewed the patient. Second, it allowed her to have flexible division of labor with her assistants, where she had assistants do a lot of the work. This combination allowed her to be much more efficient and allowed her to see more than 50% more patients than she can now. She used to see 35 when she worked with paper charts, and now she can only see 20. So what we found in our ethnographic investigations of healthcare work is that there are certain efficiencies that EMRs have brought to healthcare organizations, but that these efficiency gains have mostly come in the back office. And that at the same time, EMRs have actually increased the documentary workloads for providers, and that providers now spend more time documenting visits than they ever had to when they worked with paper charts. Of course, this situation presents great opportunities for new technologies that specifically target this unwelcome additional burden for providers. After all, if we can make their documentation work easier and faster, healthcare providers can see more patients and thus increase their own and the healthcare organization's revenue.